Hey, hey, this is DJ Kirkbride. I'm the co-writer of The Once and Future Queen, and you are listening to Ten Pod Radio. Please don't fear me, because I know what I want. Please deliver me that song out of your soul. It makes you freeze time, staring in at yourself. It's time to step outside, onto the path you once made. Deliverance. Goatman kept trying to grab Mildred, but she was moving too fast for him to get a hold of her. Aisha was watching, knowing how much using her super speed takes out of her best friend. She's going to be eating all night at the Chinese buffet after all this is over and done with to replace all that energy. That is, if they don't come out of it without having anything broken or beaten to a mush. She's looking for an opening, Aisha told Sasha. How long can she do that? Sasha asked, looking for more information. Five minutes at best, but an ever-increasing slowdown should be starting soon, Aisha replied. Mildred could feel her speed was already slowing, and she knew she had to do something quick, so she flashed over and grabbed a soccer netting from the storage room, returned and wrapped it around him, tying it all together with some long spare climbing ropes in case someone, her, snapped the climbing rope during gym class. He shredded the netting and climbing ropes in no time at all, a matter of seconds to be precise. Child's play, he growled with that ugly, goaty smile on his face. Child's play, Mildred repeated, but more to herself than directed at him. And that's when she got a gloriously fun idea. Dodgeball! Her scream cracked a window. Maybe more. Most definitely more. Aisha jumped up and shoved a rolling dodgeball rack, which had been out during the pep rally so the team could toss some balls against the wall, attacking a banner the cheerleaders had painted with the school's rival mascot on it. She pushed the ball rack straight in the direction of Mildred. Before Goatman could react, Mildred started pounding him with red ball after red ball and Aisha, now joined by Sasha, kept rolling full racks of balls to her friend. He staggered, hurting. Some of the balls burst from the force of being thrown and hitting him. Aisha and Sasha started picking up balls and hitting him with them also, getting in on the fun. Them doing that got Mildred openings to spit out eye staggers and then throw them at him, or pull down electricity from the gym lights to strike him, or stretch out her arms like Silly Putty and punch him three times, or snap her fingers, hitting him with a shockwave, and she ran over and clotheslined him. For her final barrage, she picked him up and pile-drove him into the centre of the gym floor, shattering every wooden floor tile. Mildred moved away from him as he was able to get back up onto his knees, but after trying really hard to stand, he finally collapsed, bruised and defeated. She walked over, bent down and removed the ring from his clawed hand, and in seconds the beast turned back into the man. He'll get some counselling and probably be back to work in a few months. Clearcut High School likes giving people second chances. They even rehired the government teacher who brought his sister, a banshee, to choir night. Mildred walked away from the prone body and gave a good quotable line. I'm this school's hero, no matter the villain. This will serve as a bit of foreshadowing for later stories, so fix it to memory. We hope you have enjoyed this chapter of the Tin Universe Middle Grade Series, Book 1. Written by Brian C. Williams, edited, edited by Christina Ciceris. Narrated by Stacy Taylor of Stacy's Pop Culture Parlor. Follow Stacy on Twitter at StaceBobT. Find more Tin Universe content at tinuniverse.blogspot.com. Copyright 2016 System Productions.
remember.